All right, welcome back. So let's get started into learning some KQL. Uh, first things first, this is Rod Trent's uh, GitHub repo, aka .ms slash mustlearnkql. So this is a short link. If you haven't already uh, read through parts one through three, you're gonna need to do that before you uh, hang out here with me. You're not gonna have the context here if you don't. So make sure you go through and read parts one through three at this point. So I'm starting on part three, where we kind of get into the code piece of this, so, and the workflow. So if you read through the series, there's kind of a logical workflow, how you can go from nothing in your uh, console to actionable data. So I don't know about you, but I need a, a practical example. So let's pretend like we are looking for um, the protection status of Windows Defender on some of our endpoints in, in Azure. I know that data lives in the protection status table. So if I run this over the last 24 hours, this gives me 399 backslash or forward slash forward slash is the comment um, character for KQL. So that gives me 399 records. And if I look through here, I can't really make heads or tails out of this. So let's pare this down a little bit. So if I look at the protection status table, real-time protection uh, status seems to indicate that the defender's working okay. So I'm gonna exclude those from this, this query. So protection status table, where the protection status is not equal to real-time protection. And if I, shift enter and run that so that brings me down to 48 records that's definitely a little bit more manageable data set so if i wanted to pare that down even further on this query up here i'm utilizing the last 24 hours the default let's pare that down with a time generated where clause the last 12 hours so let's run that that gives us 24 records so that's even a better, more actual table of data. So if I look down here, and to this point, I don't really know what this table consists of, but just looking through this information here. So I'll see I have some Linux, some Windows endpoints, and then I have a mixture here of protection status unknown and no real-time protection. So if I look here, unknown seems to correlate to Linux. So for the sake of this argument, let's just assume that I'm looking for only uh, Windows endpoints. So I can further pare this down to type has Windows Defender. So shift enter, that should pare it down even further. And it does, cuts out half. So now I have 12 records. Now, if I look through here, I'm looking at endpoints in the last 12 hours or Windows endpoints in the last 12 hours that do not have Defender enabled. And you can see that based on this protection status details column here. Seems to indicate that it's been disabled or something. So I probably need to investigate this further. Well, let's make this a little bit more presentable and cut out some of the stuff that maybe I necessarily don't want to have to look at. So this is my previous query. Now I want to project only the columns that I really want to look at. So in this case, time generated, device name, resource group, and computer IP. And actually, before we summarize it, let's just look at what that looks at. So you can comment out a line just by putting the backslash backslash in front of it. Now, if I hit shift enter, this is what my new data set looks like with all the other stuff I'm really not interested in. So I only have my four columns here. Uh, I guess what I really wanna know is how many devices, how many different devices do I have this problem on? So at this point, I don't know, you would assume that you would have in a larger environment, you may have more entries in here, but to do that, Let's just summarize it by device name and count them. So this tells me over the last 12 hours for this Windows endpoint, 
I had 12 logs generated in the protection status table that basically tell me Windows Defender is disabled or not working in some form or fashion. So that's kind of the workflow, how you can go from sitting here in front of the console, staring into Azure to walking your way through to some actionable intelligence. All right, so that's it for workflow. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to put a question down in the comments. I'll answer what I can. Until the next time, I'll see you then.